Hello and welcome to a special Q&A recording of Gaza Mon Amour, one of the 50 official selection titles at the 45th Toronto International Film Festival. This film plays as part of Contemporary World Cinema, which is generously supported by Sun Life. My name is Kiva Reardon and I'm the lead programmer of Contemporary World Cinema. I'm thrilled to be here with directors Arab and Tarzan Nasser and star Kiam Abbas. Arab and Tarzan were tw our twin brothers born in Gaza. They each graduated with a BFA in painting from Gaza's Al-Aqsa University before turning to filmmaking with the shorts Colorful Journey, Condom Lead, Apartment 1014, and with Premeditation. Their debut feature, Degradé, screened at the festival, and Gaza Mon Amour is their latest film. Yamabas is a Palestinian actor and filmmaker who has built a commanding reputation with films like Satin Rouge, The Syrian Bride, Paradise Now, Munich, Blade Runner 2049, and is also can also be seen on television Succession and Rami. Thank you to you, our audiences, for joining us here today. As an organization still impacted by COVID, we need the support of our audiences so that we can continue to present films to future generations and pre preserve these diverse and important voices. And of course, most importantly, this film is eligible for the People's Choice Award, and you can vote for your favorite film at tiff.net slash vote. Thank you all so much for being here. This is really exciting as it's kind of a, a kind of a degradé reunion for us at TIFF. Um, we wish you could be here in person, but we really appreciate it so much. Um, it's really, I'm so, I'm so excited to see everybody back. Um, and, and I kept thinking about Degrade, the last time you were here, of course. Um, when you started writing the film, Arab and Tarzan, did you immediately think, okay, we're working again with Yam, we have to have that same, that same crew back together? Um... اهلا بكم جميعا انا سعيده جدا ان اراكم مره اخرى بعد فيلم ديجرادي وهذا يعتبر اعاده اجتماع لنا جميعا واود ان اطرح سؤالا هل عندما بداتم العمل هل فكرتم في ان تبداوا العمل مع نفس الطاقم الذي عملتم معه من قبل التجربه الاولى اكيد مختلفه شوي بالنسبه لهيام هي كانت يعني بتعرف رقم صعب بالنسبه للممثلين الفلسطينيين واسم اسم كبير وبوقت انه انت جاي عم ببدا بالفيتشر فيلم اكيد يعني كثير كنت بحب اوكي بس ما كانت يعني ما كان في توافق كثير لانه لسه انا ما اول مره بدي اشتغل معه وهي بدها تشتغل معايا اوكي فما كان احنا خلينا نقول الدور مركز بس الثاني كان مكتوب لهيام شخصيه اسمها سهام على اسم هيام Um, uh, of course, the first experience was a little bit different. Hayam was different in nature. Um, it was my feature film, and I wanted to have a big name on the screen working with me. And nobody would be better than Hayam for this. And so she was nominated. But for this movie, it's quite different because the role was specifically written for Hayam. Even the name Siham rhymes with her name Hayam. <laughs> كمان بالتجربه الاولى احنا بنينا علاقه كمخرج وكممثله كثير كانت حلوه وهذا اللي شجعنا كمان مره انه نعاود التجربه كمان مره معها ويا حدا رائع يعني وانا بدي احكي عشان هي موجوده بس يا حدا انت فاهم مخضرمه وفاهمانا الصنعه كثير منيح Yes, and uh, with uh, with our first experience working together, we built a relationship as a director and with the actress. And of course, we wanted to repeat this amazing experience that we had. I do not want to talk about her a lot. She is popular, very much experienced in her field, and uh, she's here with us. Yeah, I'm just, I, I, oh, sorry, I, I wanted to also ask you, because Dekadi was a very different style of shoot, um, but also the atmosphere is so different and the character is so different. Um, what was it like coming back to work again with uh, Arab and Tarzan, given what a different uh, atmosphere this film has? Um, oh. oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, 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 it's it's really hard when you speak about Arab and Tarazan. For me, it's like you're speaking about someone or people. <laughs> I mean, two people. They're one, but they're two anyway. The people that are in my heart. So it's kind of like difficult, really, to separate um, to separate them uh, from from my feelings because they're they're. Uh, For me, they're more than just like uh, filmmakers. Uh, they're really, they're part of my life. 
So anything they do, anything they get interested in is like something that I would be interested in as well. And I would like, I love our exchange anyway, like cinematographically talking and intellectually talking and even like our laughter, our drinks together, whatever we do, it's just like, for me going back to work with them, it's like, there is no condition. There is nothing to kind of like, you know, I just like go blindly really. And I would do anything and they know it. And I, I did this for the first movie because I was really very interested once I saw them and had an exchange with them. Once only on Skype, I knew they are, they are people that would be forever part of my life. And so therefore for the second experience, there was even no comparison with the first, like there isn't, I'm not going to kind of ask myself questions about like, oh, how are they? The only thing I wished, and I think they succeeded, is for them to get what they want and for them to do the movie that they wanted. Because Degrade was a lot of frustrations, they know it, uh, but it's a great movie. And this one is just for me above all. It's just like they achieved artistically like their goal and what they wanted to do. And I'm just like a small, a small buddy behind them and will support them forever. So that's all I can say about Arab and Tarzan and my experience. Thank you. Thank you. It's so beautiful seeing your smiles as she's speaking. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think this needs translation, maybe. Yes, I have goosebumps. I am from what I heard from you right now. Thank you very much. I, I mean, there's really no thanking. Sorry, I'm just like I insist. There's no thanking. There's people that get in your life, and you only wish them grace and success. And the Arab and Tarzan are part of that. Already had a professional jaster. Um, Hayam is a friend of ours and even now she's even a closer friend to us and one of the people that I will definitely work not only two times or three times or four times more than more than that she's professional she understands what is happening she even takes in mind the circumstances and though the circumstances were difficult she still understood and worked with us uh, during in this film Oh, this is, oh, I can hear the the I just heard the the, the Paris uh, sirens in the background and forgot. I, again, I was so absorbed in what you were saying, I forgot we were in separate places. <laughs> no, it's really important for me just to say it's really funny in the circumstances and actual COVID for circumstances. It's the first time I see Arab and Tarzan since we shot the movie. Yeah, yeah. and oh, it's. Wow. Uh, and it's the first time we speak together about the movie. I mean, we have not really spoken since. And it's very, it's really very touching. I mean, as much as they are kind of emotional about it, it's very emotional for me as well, because like it's, it's a baby that was born from all the effort. And this baby today is like alive. And I'm just like very happy to, to be here with you, Kiva and Sam, of course and for the Toronto audiences to kind of really present this kind of like relationship between them and myself, you know? And their movie is really something that I would just like defend with my teeth, you know, as an animal basically, because I really believe in them. And that's, you know, it's hard because I'm very emotional. So let's stop here and talk about the movie anyway. <laughs> okay. I want to thank you for for sharing that though because it is مش عارف احكي زيك مش عارف مش مش تعرفي انه انا قاعد انا وياك حنحكي كثير بس بالوقت هذا عن جد مش عارف احكي زي ما انت بتحكي بس الاحساس كثير متبادل تمام والشيء يعني حلو انه انا عم بسمعه منك كمان وهذا بيدفع 
وبشجع وهذا شيء كثير حلو فثانك يو ثانك يو I I I won't be able to speak uh, like you though I know if we sit together now and we start chatting we'll speak forever but my feelings that I have for you are reciprocal there you, you are uh, and it's very really nice to hear what I heard from you right now it pushes me to do even more and more <laughs> Thank you also for being so emotional it's really a lot Yeah let's just talk back and like Yeah let's talk about the second I don't know and oh, we yeah, come back yeah, fresh yeah. again yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll talk about the movie i really like this i really like this emotional reunion but i'm an emotional person and i the covid makes me even more emotional <laughs> uh, the covid yes <laughs> um okay i i do have i do have a movie question um this is based on real events that happened i think in 2013 a real fisher a real fisherman in gaza pulled a, a statue out of uh, out of the sea When you read those a documentary had been made about it when you saw those headlines did you think right away this is the story we need to tell there's this is what we want to make into a film um, uh, okay فهم لا فهمت السؤال انا متاسف بس انا في اوكي الفيل الفكره انبنت في بلحظه ما كتبت الجارديان عن 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 التمثال عن انه فعليا في صياد من خان يونس شاب من خان يونس لقي تمثال في الميه وطلع ووقع في ايدين العيله هذه وبعد شويه الحكومه عرفت عنه فاخذت التمثال لهم وبعد هيك التمثال اوب اختفى التمثال كلاين لقصه كان كثير كاتشي Yeah. So uh, the idea of the movie uh, came to me right away when I read the, the news in The Guardian about a statue that was discovered in uh, the city of Khan Yunis by an adult. It was found in the sea. He took it and it fell in the hands of the government later on, which confiscated it. And um, it suddenly disappeared. So it became my story. It's become our story. When, our story. When you feel that there is I, it means we. <laughs> oh, sure. That's part of the problem, guys. That's yeah. part of the problem. I think it's a good thing. 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 I think it's a good So uh, also in this movie, there is a second thing that I want to add that uh, that experience uh, is repeated kind of from Degrade. We're on, we're talking about the life of people. It's true that the statue is the core idea of the film, but it's not as important as the life. I, we wanted to show lives of people. I'm so glad you brought that up because in in interviews with with Degrade, you said it was so important for you to show life. in Gaza that it wasn't just conflict it wasn't just war that you wanted to show life and what i love about this film is you show love and you see the love here that i think shows but there's also the love story itself at the core of the film why did you want to make a love story this time can can you talk a bit about that okay فكره لوف ستوري للفيلم هذا هي كانت مبنيه عن على فكره كسر الصوره النمطيه او الكليشيه المتخذه عن مدينه زي غزه او مكان زي فلسطين انه بس انت ممكن تلاقي هناك اللي هو الدمار والتخريب والحصار والاحتلال وال 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 في نص كل الميمعه هذه ما حد ممكن يتخيل انه اللف نحكي عن اللف لانه هو اخر شيء ممكن يكون مهم امام اللي بيصير باحداث يوميه ومعاناه بيعيشوها هذول الناس انه اللف مش موجود يعني مش ممكن تتخيل فكانت هاي هي الفكره انه لا هذا المكان فيه حب في الاصل لهيك الناس لليوم عايشة لليوم بتناضل إنها تحافظ على استم Do, do you want to translate some? Yes, yeah. it's quite long. So, uh, this, yeah, so, so the idea, the story is about love because um, there is this uh, preconceived idea that uh, this place is only, uh, in Gaza, it's only full of destruction and uh, vandalization and occupation. And in the midst of all this, there is really uh, something that uh, we should discuss. It is love. It is this that pushes, uh, it's love in the midst of the 
um, the daily events that happen in Gaza, the sufferings that the people go through. Nobody would imagine that there is love behind all these uh, events. And this is how actually people are living and are able to fight for the lives until today. <laughs> انك تعمل قصة حب مع انه المكان احنا بنقول عنه انه هو موجود في الحب بس ما كان سهل انه انت تصنع قصة حب في هذا المكان كل مقنع الى حد ما بانه اه, آه هاي قصة حب خصوصا انه ما في الاليمنتس اللي ممكن تغذي اي قصة حب يعني تقول السينما كافي آه انت فاهمه انفتاح حرية كذا انت عم تحكي عن مكان مسكر كثير مغلوق آه 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 يعني بتعرف حصار ومغلق اه غير انه الناس عم تتراجع بوجود الحكومه الـ الـ الاسلاميه غير انه تفكيريا فايش بدك تغذي لتغذي في قصه زي هيك؟ بفكر انه يعني مقنع الشيء الى حد ما انه قدرنا نوصل قصه حب لهذا المكان تكون بهذا الشكل المقنع اللي اوريدي موجوده بس المغذيات السينمائيه البصريه اللي هي مش موجوده اللي هي محروم منها كمان سكان قطاع غزه، ما في اماكن للترفيه، ما في اماكن لل 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 للراحه، البحر مسكر، انا عارف في سينما في شيء يا It's, it was not also easy to tell a love story that is convincing to people because especially there is no elements that are available to nurture this love in terms of like you cannot find the cinemas or cafes or, or even openness or liberty. You know how Gaza it is, it's enclosed, it's besieged and it's, uh, people are, are even becoming more, uh, I would say, backwards in the in the presence of an islamic government uh, that is there and that's why the all the elements that nurture nurture love and uh, are not available and i think we managed to make it very convincing for the audience to believe that love could exist in this place i can i add something yeah yeah sure um i, I mean this is one of the qualities uh one of the qualities, as I said, again, of Arab and Tarazan, in the sense where you uh, can, don't catch them where you expect them to be. Uh, because in the stereotypes of, of what we have in mind, often people who come from Gaza, young people like this, you know, they would, of course, talk about the suffering, the suffering of Palestinians, the way they are victims, the Israeli conflict with the Palestinians. And in fact, what is really interesting, it's that they more and more are getting into choices where, yes, they show you the reality of Gaza. Yes, they talk about like the political situation of Gaza, but basically they their interest is more on the human side of things, which means not like in a like in a very light way, but like really the complexity of the daily life in Gaza and concentrating on on characters such as the the fisherman and his love story. It's the example of how you can get stories from Gaza to people, but these stories suddenly become universal. They become just like international they're not necessarily a gaza stories though they are localized in gaza they have really a bigger sense in their humanity and in their complexity uh, when shared with people through the eyes of arab and tarazan in a movie thank you <laughs> I, I couldn't I, I couldn't agree more <laughs> absolutely um I, I'm getting a signal from our our, our producer that we, we've gone over time I would love to keep talking with you uh, and and sharing this film with our audiences but come out of present Sam as well thank you for the translation thank you all thank so you. much for being here thank Thanks you for, for sharing you. the film and yeah if there's any other thank you. Thank no, you. Thank Eva, you. I think yeah. now the audience like had a little chat about the movie. I think really they should go and see it. And like, I mean, go and see it or watch it, whatever the platform that you're doing the festival on right now, you know. I think, yeah, the, the audience really would have a, a moment of a great treat anyway. So just like watch the movie. Inshallah, Mushahida, 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 Mumtaa. نتمناها لكم وشكرا كثير لكم وشكرا لوجودكم وشكرا كل واحد باسمه لقبه
Um, I wish you all an uh, enjoying moment uh, watching this movie. Thank you all for your presence. Thank everybody here, whatever your title is or your name. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you for being here. Thank Thanks, you. guys.